Hi, hello everyone. Uh, so far in the last uh, few lectures, uh, we discussed about uh, evolution of integrated photonics devices and circuits in a very high language. And uh, today I am going to discuss about uh, how the uh, silicon photonics technology platform evolved in course of time. So, that uh, now people are thinking about uh, and uh, considering about co-integration of uh, photonics and electronics together and people are thinking about on-chip optical interconnect integration. I will just take you through a, a historical uh, path how this silicon uh, photonics technology evolved uh, in today's lecture. So, after that basically we will go to the uh, component level discussions, working principle etcetera. So, that will uh, this type of uh, high level understanding uh, overview would help you uh, when we will go through certain kind of mathematical uh, explanation, mathematical derivations etcetera, you can you will be able to relate. So, uh, let us start uh, evolution of silicon photonics platform what is that silicon for when we talk about silicon photonics platform what is that how it, it is evolved over time ok. So, if I just see that uh, if I just uh, survey the literature at R and D articles available in published in journals um, or anywhere else uh, I can see this is the first article uh, it was written by Richard Soref and Lorenzo, J. P. Lorenzo. First time, for the first time, they demonstrated optical waveguide in bulk silicon. You know, waveguide is the so far it is clear that this waveguide is the basic building block. Without waveguide, low loss waveguide, like, like uh, low loss fiber, uh, glass fiber helped for long haul communication. So, low loss optical waveguide on chip optical waveguide actually opened the uh, prospect of optical interconnect. So, that is why uh, it was a challenge uh, to fabricate optical waveguide in silicon. This guy uh, first time reported in 1985, so about 35 years ago. Uh, in single crystal silicon, single crystal silicon a new material for 1.3 and 1.6 micrometer integrated optical components. So, 1.3 you know it is called O band, O band it is 1.31 micrometer and C band it is about 1.55 or 6 micrometer that is the thing and another band earlier we are we have considered that is actually the first uh, laser diode was demonstrated in gallium arsenide, gallium arsenide that was wavelength was uh, 0 0.85 micrometer. So, when you see the optical communication optical link was established first with this wavelength 0.85 micrometer and second 1310 nanometer 1.31 micrometer and third is 1.55 micrometer. So, this is called first generation communication window, second generation optical communication window, third generation co optical communication window ok. So, uh, thing is how the he has fabricated the waveguide which can support both 1.3 micrometer 1.55 micrometer as you know both wavelength optical wavelength 1.31 micrometer 1.55 micrometer wavelength the laser light it is transparent in silicon. So, normally cut off wavelength is around 1.1 micrometer cut off wavelength in silicon 1.1 micrometer. So, more than 1.1 micrometer wavelength any electromagnetic wave or laser light that is transparent in silicon. So, that is why he has chosen to test uh, his waveguide fabricated in silicon uh, for this two 
communication window, second generation communication window O band and C band. How that was done? You see, first you take a uh, silicon substrate, bulk silicon substrate that can be crystalline silicon and that can be heavily doped N plus. It can be you can consider this is N plus plus heavily doped. Okay. Then the top layer about 7 micron layer you can have you can grow a crystalline silicon epitaxial you can grow epitaxial layer that is called epitaxial silicon layer that can be n type but it is not heavily doped for example here heavily doped means doping concentration is 3 into 10 to the power 19 and in the top layer doping concentration is 10 to the power 14 so much much lower so why is that it can be shown mathematically using Druda model if if you see this picture if you follow carrier concentration and this is the refractive index higher the carrier concentration you can have this should be negative sign basically refractive index will reduce because you know carrier will be more free carriers that will actually somehow it will relax the dielectric constant. So, refractive index will be reduced. So, higher carrier concentration refractive index will be uh, if you just see change in refractive index in two different wavelength 1550 nanometer n type and 1550 nanometer p type semiconductor. So, this is your n type at 1550 nanometer how is the refractive index change and if it is p type dopant is there. So, how is the refractive index change? So, that means as you increase the carrier concentration, refractive index will be lower. So, that can be as low as if you are just going 10 to the power 20, then refractive index change can be as high as 10 to the power minus 1. If you want 10 to the power minus 2 here, so your concentration in the order of 10 to the power 19 or so. Okay. And if it is 10 to the power 14 or below, that will be almost like a bulk. So, that means, whenever you are getting a this doped region, high heavily doped region, refractive index will be at least 10 to the power minus 2 lower than this top layer, epitaxially grown silicon layer. So, that means, if you just see if this is initially, if this is a layer for example, like this. So, in the top layer, you are getting um, silicon layer with higher refractive index 10 to the minus 2 at least 7 micrometer layer and bottom is the substrate that can be 1 millimeter few hundred micrometer thickness. So, that is lower refractive index. So, that means as you see this lower side refractive index is less and then higher refractive index and then the top there will be air. So, that means you have lower refractive index, higher refractive index and again lower refractive index. So, you can get one dimensional waveguide, planar waveguide. But if you make this type of structure, just 10 micrometer and this type of structure, reef structure, then as I mentioned here, you can actually get light confinement both in the x direction as well as y direction. So, 7 micrometer wide uh, height and 10 micrometer wide. This region can act as a waveguide core. If you launch suitably light can take a shape of guided mode which cannot escape in this direction or in this direction or in this direction. You can get a solution of that type of mode and that particular mode shape it will actually see as a guided mode that means light will be guided in the other direction. Okay. So, that waveguide he fabricated for the first time and reported in electronics later that is a one and half page article. Not only that, he demonstrated light guiding both in 1.55 micrometer and 1.33 micrometer. He also fabricated that time actually imaging technique was not that great. So, he has to show some kind of scheme, 3D scheme actually to fabricate this type of cross waveguide structure. You have two input, one input, another input and two output ports. So, this type of structure he has fabricated for power splitting purpose. If you launch here, and he could show that power is being split into two. So,
So, that means you can actually fabricate power splitters. So, that is the first evidence of the waveguide fabrication in bulk silicon okay, which is the waveguide is a fundamental building block. If you can fabricate a waveguide low loss waveguide then uh, on chip optical interconnect could be fabricated. That is the first attempt and successful. That is why this uh, we sometimes called uh, this uh, rep as a just father of silicon photonics here. Yeah. So, waveguide is there. The next thing is that modulator. What it does? Modulator it does that your electrical data can convert into optical data right say encoder basically. So, he tried to explore that okay waveguide is there now another important component for the optical interconnect we have seen is the modulator. So, is that possible that if you give a electrical signal then laser light can be modulated if you use a laser light continuous CW means continuous wave laser light you can consider lambda equal to 15 15 nanometer or or 13 10 nanometer. Then if you launch light and you according to the electrical signal if you make certain kind of structure bulk silicon maybe it can be some diode structure or something like that in diode or transistor if you can create. So, in that case by giving a electrical signal you can control the carrier concentration. So, by controlling carrier concentration you can relax the dielectric constant and you can control the refractive index and you can control the phase velocity of the guided light that is how you can have a modulator. And if you have that type of phase modulation that can be also make you can have a input waveguide you can split into two to half and then you can recombine them this is called like a mad gender interferometer. Then if you just create this type of structure here where electrical signal comes here and you can change the phase say pi phase shift depending on your signal pi phase shift you can create then one half going this direction another half going direction if it is pi phase shift when they recombine they will actually create destructive interference. So, you get no light output at the in this waveguide, but if you withdraw this phase then they will construct they will be coming in phase. So, in this way you can ele convert electrical data into optical data and he demonstrated that the carrier concentration and delta n for free holes injections how refractive index will be changed free electrons how it will be changed for 1.3 micron and this one it has been shown 1.55 micron. So, together with his student Brennett, Bennett Sorep demonstrated electro optical effects in silicon first time. Normally electro optic effect is a very good material lithium navet modulator we have seen earlier that uh, uh, Professor Camino uh, demonstrated that if you apply electric field then refractive index of the uh, lithium navet material will change that changed refractive index will modulate the guided light that is what we have seen earlier okay that is how modulator bandwidth everything uh, was demonstrated and got successful for long haul communication. But if you want to get a on chip modulator silicon is not a that type of good electro optic material you are applying electric field and uh, electric field will change the refractive index. it is not like that instead if you pass some current or give some bias then carrier concentration you can change that carrier concentration actually in turn. Uh, give a refractive index change. So, it is one type of another type of electro optic effect in silicon. Okay. So, that is how modulator was demonstrated. So, that is also by the uh, Richard Sorep and uh, that was demonstrated in 1987. So, two years later. So, first silicon waveguide experimentally demonstrated and then 1987 uh, the modulator and then same. So, he was got excited. Now, you see the things goes like what was done by uh, uh, A C Miller for integrated optics proposal to a glass waveguide and demonstration of couple of components like that. So, Sorep was having certain kind of experimental tools fabrication process tools using that he continuously changing he was continuously changing to prove that silicon is a good material for co-integration. So, he uh, after demonstrating waveguide after demonstrating modulator he came out with a proposal with more investigation more research at that time hardly anyone else was doing research in silicon photonics silicon waveguides. So, he came out with a proposal that silicon can be a good material 
candidate for super chip where you can integrate laser diode. Silicon is a platform laser diode a possible indirect band gap semiconductor that is. So, you can convert back to some way engineering you can do you can be direct otherwise you can just somehow hybridization you can do you can have laser source on the silicon substrate. And you can have a directional coupler where you can actually couple light two waveguide comes closer they interact so that light can be tunneled to the another waveguide you can make a power splitter that is what he has also demonstrated in his previous paper in electronics later. And also if possible you can also integrate optical amplifier and you can also have light signal from output using optical fiber input optical fiber output also. By CMOS integrated circuit also you can fabricate electro optic modulator demonstrated and some HBD bipolar transistor hemmed mod fed all these electronic devices can also be demonstrated photodiode of course demonstrated and ah yeah here integral V groove V groove means silicon V groove you can fabricate also using some kind of microelectronic process you can just make a, make a V groove where you can have you can place your fiber also. So, that you can get optical interfacing to the chip like electrical interfacing you can do by wire bonding and optical interfacing you can do by fiber bringing fiber together and just attaching with the waveguide. So, he proposed the super chip hybrid laser for optical purpose. CMOS electronics for electronic data, intrinsic silicon for a waveguide low loss waveguide, pin waveguide modulator for electro optic modulator, silicon germanium photo detector because silicon if you are using as a waveguide. So, it is transparent you cannot make silicon diode for detecting 1550 nanometer wavelength or 1310 nanometer. So, I, again silicon germanium is a good material he studied that that if you make a silicon germanium alloy somehow some x fraction of silicon is replaced by germanium then band gap will be reduced because germanium band gap is in the order of less than 0 0.7 electron volt and uh, it is silicon and uh, sorry it is actually uh, germanium germanium band gap is less than 0.7 and silicon is is about uh, 1.12 electron volt. So, if you make a silicon germanium alloy then you can get a band gap which can be less than 1.12 to greater than 0 0.7 electron volt. So, by controlling the fraction of germanium you can make a band gap reduction band gap engineering you can do. And if you reduce the band gap where you want to detect the photo uh, optical signal that can be used as a silicon germanium photo detector here it is shown how is the absorption is. So, depending on the absorption you can you can actually conclude that how much it is getting absorbed to create electron hole pair in that particular point. And if you have a diode and reverse bias you can actually carry uh, um, use uh, you can extract the electron hole pair generation and current just looking into the current you can say how much light, light source high or low and you can you can decode the data. So, he proposed in 1993 it is hardly in uh, just uh, 25 years ago, but at the same time electronics industry as I mentioned they were going for silicon on insulator. So, after that actually lot of research went on silicon on insulator wafer came in picture and then a group in Ghent University Belgium led by uh, rule bars. Uh, so, uh, he actually started exploring uh, this silicon on insulator part platform uh, to fabricate photonic device using uh, available CMOS fabrication process uh, in iMake. So, iMake is a uh, foundry facility available in Belgium that is for inter university uh, consortium it is a very good uh, fabrication semiconductor fabrication process industry is there process foundry is there. So, by exploiting their that process technology he uh, he and his team for the first time demonstrated very low loss silicon waveguide. This is the you see this is silicon substrate this silicon substrate can be in the order of 500 micrometer thickness and box layer here it is mentioned it is 1 micrometer later on we will see that this 1 micrometer was not sufficient. 
but when he demonstrated in 2004 when uh, intel's everything intel other uh, industry also uh, uh, investigating silicon photonics that time he used 1 micron device layer thickness and sorry box layer thickness and then silicon on insulator layer this is the layer which is actually fabricated to form a waveguide structure that is the waveguide structure he fabricated and he showed that the depending on the width because 220 nanometer wafer once you buy a wafer that wafer thickness so the thickness is fixed so only controlling parameter is the width w so by controlling the width uh, he could uh, fabricate devices different different waveguide he could fabricate the team fabricated and measured the losses so you see uh, loss per centimeter when 400 nanometer that was a very early mode primitive uh, waveguide structure in silicon on insulator. So, it was about 33, 34 dB per centimeter per dB per centimeter you may remember. If you consider the um, fiber good low loss fiber you can think about the 0 0.01 dB per kilometer or something like that. So, such a low loss optical fiber is there, but whenever you are coming to waveguide on chip you see 44 dB per centimeter and if you little bit increase the width it is about 10 dB and again further increment 7.4 dB and 500 nanometer it is dramatically low about 2.4 dB per centimeter. So, relatively higher than optical fiber, but optical fiber you use for thousands of kilometer communication, but silicon waveguide you will be using for on chip optical interconnect. So, you need few mi hundred microns hardly millimeter with millimeter length or so on. So, in that case this loss can be tolerable. So, this is the first waveguide fabricated on silicon on insulator which promised actually low loss and can be useful for practical device uh, demonstration. And along with that he also uh, fabricated uh, presented uh, one ring resonator also with 5 micrometer diameter. So, these are the bus waveguide you can launch a light here if that wavelength is resonant to this ring that will be actually stored here and it will be missing in the output side. So, that is what they fabricated using their waveguide and clearly they showed that a certain wavelength range actually is missing in the output, but with another waveguide that wavelength it could be retrieved. So, this type of device uh, we will see that this ring resonator we have already seen earlier that this ring resonator was uh, very much instrumental to demonstrate on chip transmitter multi channel multi wavelength multi color uh, transmitters and that is how uh, interconnect optical interconnect uh, advantage you could get. So, th this is the first in 2004 low loss silicon on insulator waveguide was fabricated and demonstrated and uh, showed the IMEG guys that you see this uh, what about the device we are fabricating that is actually CMOS compatible and you can actually think of um, co-integrating silicon and photonics and indeed they convinced and uh, they are the first who actually developed PDK process design kit for silicon photonics in using IMEC foundry. All right. So, later on in uh, 2012 uh, uh, Intel's research actually showed that actually they fabricated uh, using their CMOS technology which the 90 nanometer technology node this modulator they fabricated you see this is the waveguide and this is the slab region where actually you could make uh, doping p type or n type doping. So, that carrier inside the waveguide region you can control. So, that diffractive index you can actually control and this is the signal with via metal m one metal you are giving here and you can control the diffractive index and this is the top view you see this is the top view it is looking like a magender I have explained earlier it is split it into two arms and again combined. So, magender modulator they demonstrated which is giving 25 gbps speed data speed ok you can send uh, transmit data with 25 gbps and this is FOM means figure of merit that means you need 1.2 volt if you the, if your uh, device size is 1 centimeter normally device size is smaller means you can go for higher voltage particularly 1.2 volt it is shown that it is so that uh, the voltage required for driving CMOS circuit is about in the order of 1.5 or 2 volt. So, it is good that uh, if you uh, modulator length 
is we, modulator figure of merit is kept uh, within that voltage that would be great and they have demonstrated successfully. And they demonstrated four channel multiplexer, demultiplexer you know using different type of unbalanced magender interferometer it is like this unbalanced means if your magender here it is shown that it is a balanced both the arm you are input waveguide two waveguide it is coming and then combining and both arms are same this uh, arms of this length are the same that is actually used for modulator purpose. But you can cascade different type of magender interferometer having both arm unbalanced like this you see you are input and then you have one arm high low and then you can cascade again. So, that using this type of circuitry they could demultiplex four different color and they could combine also. That means, it is possible to use four different lambda and modulate modulator you can integrate separately to encode data and four lambda can be multiplex and also demultiplex at the receiver end. Multiplex in the transmitter and receiver you can demultiplex to decode the data. And they also demonstrated the germanium photo detector which is having about 20 gigahertz bandwidth that is a good enough to uh, detect 25 gbps data. Okay. So, that was demonstrated using CMOS process technology 90 nanometer technology node they used for normally 90 nanometer technology still lot of integrated circuit demonstration it is coming out to 180 nanometer 90 nanometer. So, same process technology you can use to demonstrate both silicon and photonics. So, your cost is not that high. So, that was Intel demonstrated in uh, 2012 just uh, 10 years back uh, 9 years back. And then demonstration with 40 nanometer technology node in SOE. Okay. So, that has happened also with uh, IBM technology, IBM actually demonstrated 45 nanometer technology you see uh, for co-integration of photonics and uh, electronics. So, you see that is a digital phase locked loop, driver serializer you are using all this thing serializer uh, this is optical interconnect whenever you are seeing that I will discuss that how they can be serialized in course of time. So, you need how you can encode the data all the data you can pull from your electronic circuitry and to modulate optical data uh, optical signal. You can use grating coupler, you can have the micro ring resonator for modulator and you can have uh, your output you can take with a fiber grating coupler is there and you can have a uh, digital back end heater driver. Sometimes your ring resonator you fabricate you wanted to resonate at a particular wavelength it is not resonating. So, you can use a micro heater to detune the wavelength to your desired uh, specification. So, they could transmit the data 40 gbps NRG, 40 gbps PAM4 all this modulation uh, format actually people use for communication I am not going to discuss at this point of time, but they are quite promising for on chip optical interconnect. Okay. And then as I said that that co integration I, I showed this figure earlier that uh, photonics and electronics can be co integrated in using bulk CMOS. Uh, tech bulk uh, silicon with uh, CMOS technology and it was also another demonstration from IBM uh, 180 nanometer technology they have used to co-integrate uh, this uh, for example, uh, transmitter I think they have used uh, many more uh, ring resonator it is a lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3 you can go for a, uh, hundreds of channels 100 ring resonator. Then all the laser source you can launch here and you can resonate all the ring resonators here okay, lambda 1 here, lambda 2 this one, the lambda 3 is this one and each of this ring can be driven by your data coming out of chip here. So, electronics and this photonics part can be co-integrated in bulk silicon and in chip 2 you have a again similar type of uh, uh, rings are there. So, that you can drop lambda 1 here and you can detect the data here with a photo detector this is the receiver 1, receiver 2. So, it is a these rings lambda 1 to lambda n they are used for multiplexing purpose and these rings they are used for demultiplexing purpose along with the modulator. So, this is a very rugged robust uh, design and they demonstrated it and uh, also uh, experimentally got some success in 2015 that was the IBM technology and this is now advanced it uh, and uh, this IBM technology later on acquired by global foundries. And we can actually uh, design a circuit and we can use their process design things and we can fabricate chip also from them. So, you can uh, do different type of photonic circuit demonstrations also according to your design. Yes. 
So, this is uh, the same thing uh, when fabricated how they look like. You have a wafer, this is your wafer and if you see the wafer one reticle, one reticle that is actually uh, is very well known in VLSI technology when you do photolithography or CMOS technology. So, that particular window can be exposed at a time that is actually reticle, that particular reticle by reticle you can just expose and process different type of exposure photolithography purpose just uh, in the high language if you if you are interested you can take any VLSI course you can understand how they are fabricated how normally they are fabricated using CMOS process line. So, within the reticle if you see there are different structures. Yeah? So, one structure again they are showing like this is actually chip 2 and another structure uh, they, they are taking from other. So, uh, this one this one within the reticle this is another chip 1 and this reticle. So, each of them are chip they are zoomed and they are shown here right. So, within the chip again if you see this particular area that is actually your this thing where you have vertical couplers, you have micro ring detector, dummy detector, receiver and this is 2 is to 8 uh, DES that means deserializer, electronic deserializer, SADIS all type of uh, electronic circuit is required and PRBS generator in this chip all those type of thing they could integrate that means this is try to I am trying to give you that it is actually practically feasible and people are demonstrating. So, it is no more a uh, uh, issue uh, for um, integrated optics because it is silicon waveguide actually you could demonstrate in uh, silicon on insulator both in silicon on insulator and bulk and all the technology node is being exploited uh, to demonstrate or co-integrate uh, electronics and photonics there. Yeah. So, and uh, other than that silicon, so you know still silicon uh, has certain kind of limitations. Uh, you know few uh, limitation is that uh, first limitation I would say you are restricted to use wavelength 1.1 micrometer greater than 1.1 micrometer. You are using only 1.3 1 micrometer or 1.55 micrometer third second communication window third communication window. If you want to demonstrate some device which can be uh, visible light for example, let us say 500 nanometer wavelength for example, green, blue all this visible region you want to use. Those wavelength is not useful for silicon photonics applications. Sometimes those type of uh, uh, wavelengths are useful for spectroscopic application purpose. So, that is the reason people are trying to see if, if any alternative material platform is there to demonstrate uh, waveguide and silicon platform of course. And another issue is that um, sometimes for some certain application quantum photonic application you need high power nonlinear application nonlinearity need, needed high power to be launched in the uh, waveguide. So, when you are launching 1.55 micrometer wavelength and high power then what happens two photon join together and give up energy to a single electron in the balance band and then electron hole pair can generate. So, that is why this TPA so called two photon absorption uh, it is causing a lot of problem. So, cell phase modulation, cross phase modulation so all those type of issues are there. So, silicon some problems are there for high energy application high power applications as well as uh, also losses also silicon because you have silicon waveguide and you have top bottom is silicon dioxide and uh, top is also silicon dioxide and this is silicon. So, silicon refractive index is 3.47 silicon dioxide is 1.47 contrast is 2. So, uh, so such a high contrast if little bit fabrication related uh, roughness is there in the surface that will cause a lot of losses. Okay. So, these few things are there. So, people are also exploring if there is any other alternative to have uh, low loss waveguide in CMOS uh, platform. So, people explore that uh, with a silicon nitride, silicon nitride material is frequently used for uh, IC technology for a passivation purpose, insulation purpose etcetera. Same silicon nitride which is having refractive index is in the order of 2 and surrounding silicon dioxide and silicon substrate. So, you can use this silicon nitride as a core and you can actually see that light can be confined also it is shown here. 
So, this is a report in 2010, first time uh, people demonstrated like 10 T and 8 L ultra low loss silicon nitride waveguide with low nonlinearity and high power handling capability. So, they demonstrated silicon photonics chip, but core is silicon nitride and they could demonstrate waveguide with a very long 6 meter long spiral waveguide like circular spiral waveguide for nonlinear photonic application purpose we will come to know later, but that was demonstrated. So, sometimes in silicon platform along with your silicon core waveguide, you can think of silicon nitride waveguide also which can offer low loss and not only low loss silicon nitride is having a very uh, bandwidth band gap is very wide. So, transparency is wider. So, visible region wavelength also can be transmitted. So, you can design some waveguide structure device structure which can operate at much much lower wavelength. Okay. So, that is how silicon nitride uh, waveguide is also coming into picture and uh, there are some foundry also being developed uh, so called Damascene process. You can different type of cross section this is a two line silicon nitride silicon nitride in between silicon dioxide this type of structure and sometimes silicon nitride will be in this type of rectangular rhombus structure this region is silicon nitride and in the core itself is a silicon oxide that type of waveguide structure also be fabricated for microwave photonics engineering purpose all this type of things uh, this technology also getting mature also and uh, uh, people are exploring that how to get low loss waveguide and how to improve the functionalities and more and more complex design uh, so that law uh, cost and energy efficiency everything can be predicted nicely okay and this is the uh, thing so, people think that uh, sometimes silicon waveguide has certain kind of limitations, but you uh, your demand is very high scalable photonics integrated circuits for various application programmable photonic circuits. So, that you can design a circuit you can program for various application okay. programmable photonic circuit you can do. So, that for that purpose you have you can think this is a just kind of uh, artistic viewpoint. Uh, so, is a kind of photonics on chip system in package or something like that. So, you can have three different chips it is shown here. First chip is the 3 5 pump laser 3 5 semiconductor for laser purpose and then another chip which is offering your uh, waveguide silicon nitride waveguide that can be useful for your nonlinear photonic application low loss purpose everything it is used for some certain kind of uh, so called here if you was pump it is giving your only one signal and because of the silicon nitride nonlinearity you can get different frequency generation here. Once from the single laser source you can have multiple lines laser lines and multiple laser lines you can divide into different arms of the magenta interferometer and you can do all the IQ modulation okay, intensity modulation you can do and so that you can encode data for example, one frequency from one laser you can convert into 5 frequencies here 5 colors you can generate because of the silicon nitride waveguide and then you can use your silicon chip silicon actual silicon waveguide chip for your transmitter purpose and then you combine them to you can transmit to the fiber. So, that means you can have a uh, global things and then you can just put chip side by side. Okay. So, you can have 3-5 three, three semiconductor silicon nitride waveguide chip and silicon actual silicon chip. So, uh, you can get a system in chip applications. So, nowadays you can individual you get 3-5 uh, semiconductor foundries, you can get individual um, silicon nitride foundries, you can have silicon waveguide from silicon photonics foundries. So, all this chip you can design and you can fabricate out of different foundries and you can assemble and you can make a system in package also and you can uh, think of some kind of new type of application and uh, cost effective production. Okay. So, so with this I just uh, have uh, given the technology aspects of the silicon platform, silicon photonics platform how it is being progressed. Of course, it is in high language and uh, 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 the different type of technologies being still growing, still improving all this type of thing we will be learning in course of time. And uh, in the next uh, lecture I will be entering into the uh, actual property uh, when I talk I am just talking about waveguide, waveguide device, ring resonator, magenta modulator all those type of things. How actually they work, what is their figure of merit, how you can improve their design everything. So, some theoretical aspects will be 
uh, just learning in uh, next lectures. Okay.